You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may May allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS Studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856 227 1360. Your opinion counts at 856 227 1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. 
Welcome, everybody. Welcome, fellow patriots. That includes you deplorables out there. Welcome once again to the Conservative Commandos radio show. I'm Rick Trader coming to you live from the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network at WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia, and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM, 24-7. If I read the whole list to you, we'd be here all day. And joining me today as my co-host is the Patriot from the Hoosier State of Indiana, J.D. Minier. J.D., welcome back to Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Oh, it's great to be with you on a Wednesday now, again. Great to be with you, Rick. Yes, great to have you with it, with me, my friend. J.D., it's amazing... Every day, the news just keep, keeps getting more and more interesting. Uh, we have a uh, Senate confirmation on one of Trump's picks. Yeah, Rex Tillerson was, I mean, this just came across the wire minutes ago. He was voted in as the 69th Secretary of State, uh, and it was 53-42, and people are going to say, well, that doesn't add up to 100. So I, I guess some of the senators were uh, hiding their vote or, or waiting to vote later. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's in. <laughs> yeah, he is in, and that is big news. But we have a little bit of disappointing news coming out of the ranks of some of those idiot Democrats. Lisa Markowski and uh, Snow, Senator Snow, have decided to oppose. Or Susan Collins, not Snow. I correct myself. Susan Collins and Lisa Markowski have announced their opposition to Betsy DeVoe for education secretary. Well, I think Donald Trump should take those two ladies to the woodshed for a spanking. Uh, boy, I agree. That that would bring it down maybe to about 51-42. If it gets to be a tie, uh, Mike Pence can, can bring that winning vote over the, the goal line. Mm-hmm. But it, it, well, let's see how this, maybe a mansion, you know, Senator, Democrat senator from West Virginia. Maybe there'll, there'll be some others that on the Democrat side will come in. Uh, we'll have to wait and see on this one. This looks like it's going down to the wire. We have to wait and see. And, and again, we the people need to put pressure on Congress. We need to call our congressmen. We need to call our senators. We have got to tell them that Donald Trump was, uh, was elected. We want his agenda pushed. Not to be opposing him from the people who are supposed to be supporting him, like the no. Republican members of Congress. Unreal. Oh. Uh, you know, I got a couple paragraphs I've typed up. You know, last night, uh, Donald Trump at 8 o'clock during prime time uh, trotted out Neil Gorsuch. Yes. Uh, to rep- and just a tremendous, tremendous yes. uh, jurist. And I'm thinking, you know, he's an originalist, you know, of course, when interpreting the Constitution. He believes the Constitution should be interpreted to be what the original writers understood it to mean. But then, Rick, on the other side, you have liberal judges who are not strict constructionists, but believe the Constitution is a living document, which we bent to whatever contemporary mores or culture would want it to mean. I'm thinking, what if the banks start treating language on people's mortgages as living documents? <laughs> or, or employers started telling their payroll managers to treat everyone's you know, salary as, as living documents this week. <laughs> or, what, and what if your health, your health insurance, your homeowners, your auto insurance was treated as living documents? Oh. Other, you know, on the other side, what if the conservatives started assuming the liberals' viewpoint and started pushing back and telling the IRS their tax code is a living document. <laughs> and what if I told the traffic officer I had adopted Hillary Clinton philosophy and I didn't intend to drive 70 miles an hour in that school zone. <laughs> and and by the way, in the spirit of Justice Ginsburg, I think traffic laws are living documents too. <laughs> you know, I, when it, I'm, I'm wrapping up here, but when it comes to the Constitution, I'm thinking liberals are bipolar. They're pro-life, wanting it to be a living document, yet they're also pro-choice, like Eric Holder, Loretta Lynch, and this recent 
fired stand-in Attorney General Sally Yates, and who only wanted to enforce the parts of the Constitution they like. J.D., J.D., I love it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, a living document, a living document. Huh. But, and what about this vetting? You know, the extreme vetting for the Democrats, it means Trump's nominee. Extreme, extreme, ultra vetting. But it's okay for them to have no vetting and open borders when it comes to immigration policies, isn't it? <laughs> it sure uh, is. <laughs> it sure is. Oh, it's, it's a crazy world we live in. in uh, indeed, indeed. Indeed, indeed. Well, God, J.D., uh, I'm sorry, were you finished? It's hard for me no, to tell I, when you're finished. I, you know, you, you, need to, you need to give me... Uh, I don't want to interrupt you, J.D., when you're on a roll <laughs> like this. So you need no, to give no, me the I, high side when you're done. <laughs> you, you, you get me going. <laughs> and, uh, don't but, tell your wife that, I, Oh, guys. You know, on serious side, today Trump had a listening session at the White House in honor of uh, the start of Black History Month. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I talked to you before the show, but it included Pastor Daryl Scott of Ohio's New Spirit Revival Center. Mm -hmm. And he's a member of the Trump transition team. And uh, he told the president that top gang thugs in Chicago had reached out to him personally due to his affiliation with Trump. And... I'm going to read here. I was recently contacted by some of the top gang thugs in Chicago for a sit-down. They reached out to me because they associate me with you, and they respect you. They believe in what you're doing, and they want to have a sit-down about that body count. So in a couple of weeks, I'm going to go to Chicago, and straight with these street guys, we're going to commit to, to lowering that body count, and if we can bring in some special programs. So there may be some breakthroughs. Uh, you know, it's, it, I saw Christina about that. Uh, you know, this is Barack Obama's hometown, Chicago. And, and Rick, you, you could tell the statistics. We, we've heard them so much. It's just more deaths than Chicago and New York combined. Mm. Uh, and uh, But here's an opportunity, I think. And I seriously, seriously think uh, Pastor Daryl Scott has on to something. Well, you know, J.D., I believe that these gang members, just like the Muslims... They only respect one thing. They only respect strength. We big, John, J.D., I'm sorry. Mr. John Forsyth Jr. is behind me about the, to hit me in the head because we haven't gone to a break, but you are listening to Conservative Commando's radio show with J.D. Muneer and yours truly, Rick Trader, coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commando's radio network at WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia and around the world on the internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM 24 7. Today's show, like all our shows, is being brought to you by the First Amendment, protected by the Second. JD and I will be right back and we'll tell you who our guests are for today. Yeah. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. 
Hi, I'm Kevin Wade. Conservative Commandos is happy to welcome Liberty HealthShare as a sponsor. Liberty HealthShare is a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. Liberty HealthShare exists for everyone who purchases health care for themselves or their family or who wants to control their own health care. I run a small business, and we were caught in the confusion of Washington's ever-changing health insurance requirements. We found a common-sense solution in Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It simply unites like-minded Americans to share medical costs together. Join a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. That's Liberty Health Share. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty Health Share today at 855 585 4237. That's 855 585 4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856 227 1360. Your opinion counts at 856 227 1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with JD Muneer and Rick Trader. For rebroadcasts, Podcasts, whatever you want to call them, check out our websites, ccrshow.com or CCRS Network. Or at 8 a.m., log on to Leading Edge Radio Network, 11 p.m., highplainstalkradio.com. Or you could hear our show and all the shows, like Chosen Generation with Pastor Greg Young or The Real Side with Joe Messina from your and Conservative Commandos. You can hear us 24 hours a day from your telephone. By calling 832-999-1199, 832-999-1199, you don't need a, an app, you don't need to download anything, you don't even need a radio or a computer, just this number and a phone, 832-999-1199. J.D., before we went to break, you were talking about how the gang members in Chicago have reached out or are reaching out to Donald Trump. And it reminded me of something that I heard about the Iraqis, the war, the warlords in Iraqis. They only appreciate someone of strength, okay? That's what gets their attention. Not giving them things, not cuddling them, not saying, oh, it'd be nice, guy. No, they only appreciate strength. So it could be that these gang leaders in Chicago are looking at Donald Trump and say, hey, if we don't work with this guy, this guy's going to come after us. Yeah. And maybe that's why they're reaching out. Uh, you know, I agree. And, and then there's the strength of character. You know, Ben Carson was there this morning at the White House with Donald Trump. And uh, wants to do so much, not only just do loans with HUD, but uh, revive people's minds and spirits. Yeah. Uh, and, he, and, of course, the Martin Luther King, he had to point out once again to everybody in the room that he never, ever took Martin Luther King bust out of out of the, the statuary, out of, out of the Oval Office. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he mentioned the museum, you know, the Black History Museum on the National Mall. That's new. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, you know, this month, Frederick Douglass was mentioned by Trump this morning. And w- I think we're going to try to get Frederick Douglass, uh, our Kate Carl Kelly, uh, back on the show this month. Uh, Harriet Tubman, Rosa parks it, it was just a i thought a great time this morning at, at right. the oval office uh had to talk about that well that's you know donald trump i can remember remember seeing post in like in 1989 got an naacp award i could be wrong on that date but uh i think i think that if the black community don't give trump a chance they're going to be making a big mistake I really do. A big mistake in that they're they're going to miss out on a real opportunity to work with someone who truly wants to work with them. And I think we're seeing that in Chicago, how how Donald Trump said he's going to go there. I think he should take Ben Carson with him. Hey, J.D., you know, I mentioned earlier and I wanted to get this in real quick. I'm encouraging all our listeners to call your congressmen and call your senators And you tell these bimbos in Washington, both Democrats and Republicans, 
to get behind Donald Trump in his picks. You know, like Collins and Markowski have come out and said that they're going to oppose Betsy DeVoe for Secretary of Education. I mean, come on. They're Republicans, for crying out loud. They should be wanting to work with Donald Trump. No, I don't know what's up their thing. But anyway, I wanted to give out this number. And this is a number that you can call to talk to your member of Congress, your senators, your congressmen. It's 202-225-3121. 202-225-3121. You know, we've seen for the past two weeks since Donald Trump has been inaugurated, these idiots marching around the streets of Washington and everywhere else dressed up disgracefully as if it's a perverted Halloween parade. But this is how we, this is how we get our voices heard. This is how we get our message across. We had Congressman Paul Brown on yesterday, and he says, yes, it does influence these people, especially if it's coming time for elections. Well, we just had an election, but... In many of these states where these senators are going to be up for re-election, they were states that were carried by Donald Trump. you got to let them know, both the Democrats and the Republicans, that we, the people, are standing behind Donald Trump. And we are going to hold them accountable if, they're, if they do not support him in his picks. Once again, that number is 202-225-3121. Call that number. Tell them which state, what district you're in. They'll connect you. We connect you with your congressman or senator. JD, JD, let's briefly go over our guest, and then if we have more time, we'll talk about more things in the news. At uh, three thirty-five, I'm going to have the honor of speaking with Bob Dorigo Jones. He is a senior fellow for the Center for America. He is also the author of the best-selling book. Remove Child Before Folding, the 101 Stupidest, Silliest, and Wackiest Warning Labels Ever. He is the host of a national internet radio commentary, Let's Be Fair. And we're going to be playing some of those Let's Be Fair clips. And there, in these Let's Be Fair clips, he shares important stories about the impact of crazy lawsuits and a litigation-happy society we live in. So that's Bob Dorigo Jones at 335. J.D., who do you have at 405? Justin Stevens. He's the Indiana State Director for Americans for Prosperity. And we're bringing him on because this is a template that's starting to, to pop up from sea to shining sea. The state legislators want to increase the price of gasoline mm. and increase the tax on it. Yep. Well, we saw that in Pennsylvania. We saw that in New Jersey. And it drives me crazy when they do that, J.D. With all the people who are driving, there's more gas being bought now than ever before. And I don't know why they can't live on the budgets that they have, but we'll get into that with uh, Justin Stevens. You know, and we have a very special guest at 435. John Malcolm from the Heritage Foundation. He heads up the Edwin Meese III Center for Legal and Judicial Studies, and he happens to be the man responsible for creating Donald Trump's Supreme Court list. Wow. And look forward. That was such a major moment last night it in was. our nation's history, I thought, Rick. And uh, we want to get his views. It should be a, a great, just a great interview. And I'm very, very encouraged by Donald Trump's pick. Uh, surfing around last night on on TV, listening to all the pundits talk, the ones, from, uh, the people on the right love them, but also what is important, the people on the left hate him. So that tells me he must be the right pick. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's uh, a great guest, uh, John Malcolm at uh, four thirty five. Great topic too, JD. You know, Rick, you just were talking about call that congressional switchboard number. Yes. They get these nominees going. You know, yes. it's something new new today. And that is, uh, we don't have much time, but uh, Orrin Hatch, uh, 
the Republican lawmakers of the Senate Finance Committee, the Democrats didn't show up, and so they suspended the rules. They asked the Senate parliamentarian if this is okay, and so those 14 Republicans that were there in the chamber did the voting. And so they moved Steve Muchin and, and uh, Tom Price, uh, so we're talking about Treasury Secretary and, and Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services, they now are going to go before a full Senate for an up-and-down vote. So all these shenanigans, all these sit-downs, all these boycotts, uh, the chickens are starting to come home to roost. All these hissy fits coming from the left. Well, good. I'm glad they did. And you are listening to the Conservative Commandos with J.D. Muneer and Rick Trader. Mr. John Forsyth, Jr., working the boards, keeping me on schedule. And we're all coming to you live from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network at WNGC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the birthplace of liberty, and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeart Radio, AM FM 24-7, can go on and on. Don't go away. On the other side, we'll be speaking with Bob Dorigo Jones, Senior Fellow for the Center for America, talking about Let's Be Fair. This is Rick Trader, host of the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And I'm John Forsyth, owner of WNJC Radio. Fellow patriots, the Conservative Commandos Radio Show is for conservatives, about conservatives, and by conservatives. We are patriots who want to take our country back from the likes of Barack Obama, Harry Reid, George Soros, and Nancy Pelosi. But we can't keep up this fight without your critical support today. Can you help? Please go to www.helpccrs.com right now and make a donation by credit card or PayPal. That's www.helpccrs.com. Our goal is to expose the liberal agenda and distortions. We are fighting to spread the truth about political issues, political leaders, and conservative issues and values. Our hosts are not paid. In fact, we buy our own airtime studio time and pay our own expenses we created the show because we are trying to make a difference so can you help the ccrs expose the truth in 2014 and beyond go to www.helpccrs.com help keep the conservative commandos radio show on the air by going to www.helpccrs.com and make a donation today to return our country to the conservative roots created by our founding fathers. If your health care has become a burden and you're worried about being stuck for another year, you have options. Liberty Health Share could be the solution to your problem. Open enrollment is here and could be your chance to free yourself from insurance. Take this opportunity and join Liberty Health Share. You can finally be in control and have freedom when it comes to your health care. Liberty Health Share offers an entirely open network, which means you choose your doctors and you choose your hospitals. Liberty Health Share offers freedom from insurance, meaning no tax related penalties. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty Health Share today at 855 585 4237. That's 855 585 4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. 
PCS4Automation.com. That's PCS, the number four, Automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. At 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Yes, you are. You are listening to the Conservative Commando's Radio Show with J.D. Manier and yours truly, Rick Trader. For podcasts of our shows, check out our websites, ccrshow.com or CCRS Network. At 8 a.m., log on to Leaning Edge Radio Network or 11 p.m., highplanestalkradio.com. Or you could hear our show and all the shows that are part of Conservative Commandos Network from your phone by calling 832-999-1199. I want to welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show a very good friend of ours, Bob DeRigo Jones. He's a senior fellow at the Center for America. He's the author of the best-selling book, Remove Child Before Folding, The 101 Stupidest, Silliest, and Wackiest Warning Labels Ever. And he's a host of a national radio internet commentary, Let's Be Fair. And Bob DeRigo Jones, welcome back to Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Thanks, Rick. Nice to talk with you again. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. And Bob, since we last talked, so many things have happened. We have a new president. And actually, that's what our first Let's Be Fair is going to be talking about, Donald Trump and regulations. So, Mr. John Forsyth, Jr., please play that one. I'm Bob DeRigo Jones, and this is Let's Be Fair. Job providers often say that one of the biggest problems they have when trying to create more jobs is complying with all the government regulations there are today. Americans seem to understand. In a nationwide Gallup poll taken shortly before the election, twice as many people said that there is too much government regulation compared to those who said there is too little. So how do we tackle this problem then? Well, just prior to his election, Donald Trump said that for every new regulation created, Two existing regulations must be repealed. That proposal has been called either bold or radical, depending on who you talk to. But did you know it's actually worked elsewhere? In 2010, Great Britain instituted a one-in, two-out rule to reduce government red tape there. And it proved so effective, it was recently expanded to one-in, three-out. Let's be fair. It's time to get serious about this in the U.S., too. Let's end the old Roach Motel system where regulations check in, but they never check out. Learn more. Visit our website at centerforamericatv.org. 
regulations check in, but they never check out. I love that, Bob. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I, what I would like to know, what is wrong with that one third of the things we don't have enough government <laughs> regulations? What are what are they drinking? What are they smoking, Bob? I don't They're know. probably part of the, uh, the government uh, regulators who are enforcing the regulations and making Aye. a lot of money off these regulations. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, you know, this is the new president's made a lot of news about trying yes. to cut the red tape and make government more user friendly and and, uh, and and unleash this great economy that we have. And the, one of the reasons that we did this commentary is because a lot of people do think that it's a radical idea to cut government bureaucracy. And they say, well, it's a nice idea to say you can cut uh, government regulations. And it might even um, uh, be a nice idea to say that you can cut two for every new one you you bring about but is it really possible and we came across some very interesting research that showed uh, as we mentioned in the in the commentary that england has already done this they're five years six years seven years ahead of us now and it's done so well that they're expanding it to three out when you pass a new one uh, what, we didn't have time to talk about the fact that Canada is also doing something very similar, and they have a two in, uh, a two out, one in rule. So uh, this is hopefully uh, going to assure people that you don't have to totally deconstruct government in order to bring about these positive changes. That well, you know, you need some regulations. We all want clean air and water and, and so mm-hmm. forth and safety regulations. But it's gotten it's gotten so far beyond mm-hmm. what we can do uh, that, uh, be, but what we can live with that we need to uh, push the reset button. Hey, Bob, I have an idea for you, and you're the man to do it. You're the man who wrote the book. <laughs> Remove child, child before, before folding. folding. The one hundred one stupidest, silliest, and wackiest warning labels ever. New book, Bob. The 101 stupidest, silliest, and wacky regulations ever. I love it. I love it. Maybe we could branch off and have a TV show. We've actually been thinking about doing something like that, a YouTube show. And, and I think that's a, an excellent idea. Maybe we'll be talking about that in a couple months. Well, are you going to cut me in on that, Robert? I, I'll try my best. <laughs> <laughs> Bubba, what about... You know, I we have you on here like once a month talking about these crazy, wacky lawsuits that you bring out. And let's be fair. What do you think Donald Trump may do as far as litigation reform? Well, that's a good question, because like you said, we we spend a lot of these commentaries focusing on how government's trying to regulate us through litigation mm-hmm. or how how individual lawyers are trying to regulate our behavior by suing us. Mm-hmm. And what we're trying to do is is, um, is focus on both now through litigation and through the legislative and administrative processes. We 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 don't know what this new administration will do as far as litigation, uh, reforming tort laws to uh, bring about common sense and more personal responsibility. Some believe that when you get involved in tort reform, it really is more of a state issue, mm-hmm. and traditionally it has been. So maybe that's why we haven't heard a lot about that either in um, some of the uh, the press conferences and, and so forth. Probably they haven't even really been asked about it. So I think that they're probably fighting so many fires now on so many different levels with uh, with all the issues from uh, immigration and, and so on that this this just hasn't risen up to the the top of their list yet. Hey, you know what, Bob? I want to play this next Let's Be Fair because this is 2017. 2016 is behind. I would like to hear what the um, craziest lawsuit-related story of 2016 was. But let's take a break now, okay, to okay. give it to give it uh, just due time. All right, so, Bob, just hold on for just two minutes for us, please. And you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show. With J.D. Minear and Rick Trader coming to you live from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network at WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeart Radio, AM FM 24-7. Our guest this segment is Bob Dorigo Jones, Senior Fellow for the Center of America, or the Center for America, 
And we're talking about Let's Be Fair. Be right back. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. Hi, I'm Kevin Wade. Conservative Commandos is happy to welcome Liberty HealthShare as a sponsor. Liberty HealthShare is a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. Liberty HealthShare exists for everyone who purchases health care for themselves or their family or who wants to control their own health care. I run a small business, and we were caught in the confusion of Washington's ever-changing health insurance requirements. We found a common-sense solution in Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It simply unites like-minded Americans to share medical costs together. Join a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. That's Liberty HealthShare. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty HealthShare today at 855-585-4237. That's 855-585-4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with J.D. Manier and Rick Drader. For rebroadcasts of our shows, check out our websites, ccrshow.com or ccrsnetwork.com. Our guest this segment is Bob Dorigo Jones, Senior Fellow for the Center for America. And Bob, I, just before we went to the break, I teased a little bit that we were going to do the craziest lawsuit-related story of 2016. So you and J.D. Hold and you and our audience will hear our next Let's Be Fair. I'm Bob DeRigo Jones, and this is Let's Be Fair. It's time to announce our choice for the craziest lawsuit-related story of the year. It involves a nature photographer who was sued by the group People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. To make a long story short, a monkey in Indonesia took a picture of himself using the photographer's camera. It was hilarious, and the monkey's selfie went viral. Unfortunately, that's when the real monkey business started. PETA's lawsuit claimed that the monkey, not the photographer, should get all the money generated by the picture. Their lawsuit, however, ignored the fact that Congress has never given animals the right to sue over intellectual property and that the photo happened only because of the photographer's meticulous work in setting up the shot. Let's be fair. If you think this lawsuit sounds bananas, you're not alone. A federal judge ruled that the monkey can't own a copyright. PETA, however, has appealed that decision, and a ruling is now pending. See the picture and learn more by visiting our website at centerforamericatv.org. I don't know what to say, Bob DeRigo Jones. You talk about bananas. I could think of other words that I can't say here, but what is with these wackos at... At PETA, they're suing the photographer, saying that the monkey should get the rights. Oh, my gosh. I know. Bob. Talk, I talked to this Oy. guy. What we didn't have time in the commentary to say is that he's a British photographer. He's not even an American citizen. The The, uh, the picture was taken halfway around the world in Indonesia. So, 
you have this British photographer, not even in the United States, and he's sued by PETA. Well, guess where they sued him? Of course, the United States. The reason this is, I bring this up is they would never sue sue him in the United Kingdom or any other country in the world because other countries wouldn't tolerate a ridiculous lawsuit like that. Mm. But here's a lawsuit that was originally dismissed, but it's still pending in our courts, and this guy's still spending a lot of money. Wait, when you say so, our courts, you mean the courts here in the United States? or Right here in the United States, oh yes. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. I don't know what to say, but that is just so ridiculous. Again, it goes back to the conversation we had earlier about tort reform. My gosh, some, somebody needs to do something about this. Crazy, crazy stuff. You know, Bob, we were also talking about regulations, which kind of relates to this next story that um, that we're going to do here on Let's Be Fair. On, and let's play this next one, John Forsyth, Jr. I'm Bob Rico Jones, and this is Let's Be Fair. Imagine playing a board game like Monopoly if the rules changed every time it was your turn to make a move. That's what some people say it's like trying to comply with federal regulations. A home builder told Congress last year that it's been trying to get a federal permit to develop a piece of property for nearly 30 years. The builder says that throughout every step of the process, the rules have changed and new requirements have been added. But what makes the delay so frustrating is that the relevant federal law hasn't changed since 1972. It was the way that bureaucrats kept reinterpreting the law that was the problem. Let's be fair. Protecting our environment is important. Government regulation is needed. But the long, drawn-out process of enforcing those regulations can be even worse than having bad regulations in the first place. While the new administration in Washington considers how to eliminate unneeded regulations, one of the first priorities should be speeding up enforcement of regulations already on the books. Learn more. Visit our website at centerforamericatv.org. You know, Bob, we'll all agree that we need some regulation of some type. What you're talking about, it's not the regulations, it's, it's how people are interpreting these regulations. Over 30 years, I wonder how many pencil pushers this guy has had to deal with. Well, that's right. And one of the problems that we have in our federal government is that Congress and the executive office over the last probably three or four decades have delegated so much lawmaking uh, authority to administrators who are non-elected people that it's gotten out of control, and that's why you have somebody like this home builder that's been fighting for decades to get uh, approval from the EPA to build on property that they own. It, it's ludicrous. And it, as a matter of fact, I was just reading a very interesting article about um, the the new uh, judge who has been uh, nominated by President Trump for mm-hmm. the Supreme Court. And one of the key decisions that you're going to hear a lot more about, I think, in the next couple of weeks is he has actually tried to, and has written about how we need to rein in uh, federal bureaucrats. He doesn't call them bureaucrats. They're administrators that have been delegated this authority. And he's one of the few judges who have done this in recent years. Even uh, this article pointed out even uh, certain justices that have been considered conservative on the Supreme Court have uh, have more or less accepted the fact that the executive uh, branch can delegate rulemaking and therefore lawmaking authority to the, the, this wide-ranging and ever-growing bureaucracy. So hopefully we'll hear more debate about this in the years ahead. And if it's not something that is dealt with by Congress, well, it sounds like we might have an incoming Supreme Court member who's willing to address it. Bob, where is this taking place? This has taken place down in the... It was either Virginia or North Carolina. I, I uh, let me see here. It was um, tried to bring this up. Uh, the Chesapeake. Um, so it must have been Virginia. Yeah, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Okay. And um, this this uh, builder testified before Congress uh, because they were considering some changes to their um, procedures. And, uh, and and somebody in Congress brought him in, this, this mm-hmm. builder, to talk about their experience. And, and there are so many more, I can tell you, from having spoken to people like this. Wow. They don't even get a chance to testify, but it, it's good that we have a few people willing to, to go to Congress and tell their stories. Wow. And, again, what gets me is it's not the regulations 
that have changed. It's the interpretation of the regulations. Reminds me of what's going on in our courts with judges. How they're they're not following the law. They're in, they are interpreting the law. They they are passing laws that they think the law should be, not what the laws really are. Uh, you know, but that's right. The problem is we have too many laws and too many lawyers. Hey, Bob, you know our last story about the monkey. My my friend and co-host JD has a, a great point or a great question here about the monkey and the mm-hmm. selfie. Is the monkey going to testify in court? <laughs> if so, I want to be there. That's one one court proceeding I'd love to see on TV. <laughs> oh, I, I'd love that, too. Hey, Bob, let's do this next Let's Be Fair. And we got some very sad news recently that the Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey Circus, after 146 years, is going out of business Once the circus leaves town, it will never be back again. So let's play this next Let's Be Fair. I'm Bob DeRigo Jones, and this is Let's Be Fair. The Ringling Brothers and Barnum & Bailey Circus is known as the greatest show on earth. For a century and a half, its death-defying performances have dazzled audiences. But it's all about to end. The circus has announced that it will take down its big top for the last time this May. Why? Why? increased transportation costs, and the difficulty of attracting a younger generation more fascinated with digital games are two reasons. And, according to sources like the Wall Street Journal, an expensive lawsuit by some animal rights groups is to blame, too. The circus had to spend $20 million on lawyers for a lawsuit that was eventually dismissed. Let's be fair, the groups eventually had to pay back the circus $9 million. But it also took a lot of time and energy away from managing the circus, and it was just too much to overcome. Unfortunately, excessive litigation is now turning our justice system into a circus, and we have to wonder which American institution will fall next. Learn more. Visit our website at centerforamericatv.org. Well, maybe we should have played the monkey story right before, right after this one, because maybe the monkey will make a lot of money out of royalties and can buy the circus and put it back on the road. We'll have the monkeys operating the circus now. We've gone full cycle. Yeah, this is a really, really sad story. And, you know, the interesting thing is we played four segments here. Two of those segments involved lawsuits brought by PETA. (laughs) PETA was the one that sued the Ringling Brothers Circus, and they uh, lost. And they lost big time. And the judge slapped them. You very rarely hear about a judge that will require somebody who sued somebody else to pay their legal bills. And in this case, PETA had to ante up about $9 million, but the, the legal bills were even more than that. Uh, but between the money and one of the things that I think a lot of times we fail to realize is all the time and effort that it takes to to fight these lawsuits really is a major concern for anybody in business today. It takes, takes so much of your focus away for, from what you need to be doing and running a business. And I don't think that the circus was ever able to recover from that. Hey, John, bring, D, bring J.D. back into the conversation. You know, Bob, and, and again... As you said, it, it cost Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey $20 million to fight this suit. PETA got hit with a $9 million, I don't know, what, what, what do you call it, fine? Yeah, well, uh, they had to pay the legal bills, the, the portion of the legal bills of Ringling Brothers. Well, you see, Bob, and we've talked about this here, about loser pays. I think that this is a system that would stop a lot of these crazy lawsuits. And, J.D., we see this with the the ACLU all the time. They threaten schools. They threaten municipalities that if you don't do what we want, we're going to sue you and stuff. J.D., if you had loser pays, if you had real tort reform that include loser pays, to do what this judge did, make the loser pay the bills of the the winner that maybe a lot of these crazy lawsuits, J.D., would be stopped. Yeah, and it's like Texas. They, they've got loser pay, and we'd still have the circus today, wouldn't we? Because it, it had to do with the treatment of elephants, I think, didn't it? And, right. and ultimately right. all those millions of dollars. Uh, Bob, I got a question for you. Democrats love regulations. Could, could we start up something like carbon credits? And, and I know Indiana, we'd give all our regulations to California if they could send back us some oranges. Well, you might you might be onto something right there. Uh, 
because uh, we need to try something new. I mean, I, we're, we're going to see a lot of new approaches, and that could be something that we hear about more. Bob Jerico Jones, Center for America. How do people follow you, Bob? They can go to centerforamericatv.org, or the easiest way to see that monkey selfie is go to Bob Dorigo Jones, D-O-R-I-G-O Jones, dot com, and uh, just type in monkey in the in the search box. You have to see this picture. It's worth a million bucks. Bob oh, Dorigo right. Jones. I get the money for that. <laughs> we always, hey, Bob, I guess the next time you and I will talk maybe might be at CPAC? I hope so. I, I'd love to see you again there, Rick. Well... Love to see you there, Bob. Always love having you on. You know, Bob, this is, I look forward to this segment that we do like once a month. It's kind of like a break from um, politics as it is, and it's always fun for me. Me too, Rick. Bob Dorigo Jones, Center for America. Let's be fair one more time. That website, Bob, or those websites? Yes, Center for America, TV.org or BobDorigoJones.com. All right. You take care. God bless, Bob. All right. Thanks. You too. And you are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with J.D. Muneer and yours truly, Rick Trader, for rebroadcast. Oh, that's the wrong read. And we're coming to you live from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network at WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia. It's never the wrong read. I make the rules. I can change the rules. But uh, we also come to you from around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM, 24-7. Don't go away. On the other side, we'll be speaking with Justin Stevens. He's the inner Indiana State Director for Americans for Prosperity, talking about raising gas prices. Host of the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And I'm John Forsyth, owner of WNJC Radio. Fellow patriots, the Conservative Commandos Radio Show is for conservatives, about conservatives, and by conservatives. We are patriots who want to take our country back from the likes of Barack Obama, Harry Reid, George Soros, and Nancy Pelosi. But we can't keep up this fight without your critical support today. Can you help? Please go to www.helpccrs.com right now and make a donation by credit card or PayPal. That's www.helpccrs.com. Our goal is to expose the liberal agenda and distortions. We are fighting to spread the truth about political issues, political leaders, and conservative issues and values. Our hosts are not paid. In fact, we buy our own airtime studio time and pay our own expenses we created the show because we are trying to make a difference so can you help the ccrs expose the truth in 2014 and beyond go to www.helpccrs.com help keep the conservative commandos radio show on the air by going to www.helpccrs.com and make a donation today to return our country to the conservative roots created by our founding fathers. If your health care has become a burden and you're worried about being stuck for another year, you have options. Liberty Health Share could be the solution to your problem. Open enrollment is here and could be your chance to free yourself from insurance. Take this opportunity and join Liberty Health Share. You can finally be in control and have freedom when it comes to your health care. Liberty HealthShare offers an entirely open network, which means you choose your doctors and you choose your hospitals. Liberty HealthShare offers freedom from insurance, meaning no tax-related penalties. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty HealthShare today at 855-585-4237. That's 855-585-4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. 
Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCS4Automation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. And this is J.D. Manier, and your host, Rick Trader. If you'd like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, just check out our website, ccrsnetwork.com and ccrshow.com. Or at 8 a.m., log on to leadingedgeradionetwork.com. In the evening, log on at 11 p.m. to highplainstalkradio.com. And you can listen to the Conservative Commandos from any phone by calling 832-999-1199. Our next guest, Justin Stevens, is a ninth-generation Hoosier. He's the state director for AFP. He comes to the Americans for Prosperity after serving as a regional director for United States Senator Dan Coates. Justin has a history of building effective grassroots organizations and has a passion to defend the American dream. Welcome to the Concerted Commandos Radio Show, Justin. Hey, it's great to be on. Thank you all for having me. Tell us these plans for raising taxes and highway user fees here in, in the state of Indiana. Yeah, so we've been fighting it off uh, for a couple of years now, and, and these things are happening across the United States. You know, a lot of states are, uh, are are claiming they don't have the money to fund their roads anymore, so they wanted to raise their gas taxes. Uh, last year, uh, the bill was, was minor compared to the one this year. This year, we're looking at a, a $0.10 cent per gallon increase uh, indexed to inflation, so we're looking at perpetual gas tax increases from here on out without any further legislative approval. Uh, also, a $15 per vehicle registration fee, uh, tolling on uh, re- requests for a waiver uh, to put tolling on all of I-65, which is our north-south interstate, and I-70, which is our east-west interstate. Uh, not to mention, you know, fees on electric ve- vehicles and so on and so forth. So it's really a, a pretty nasty bill when you look at it. Uh, about an eight hundred million dollar uh, per year impact. Well, Justin, we're one of the highest gas tax states in America, and. And don't we have a seven cent? No, seven percent, not cents. Seven percent gasoline tax, and that's in place now, isn't it? 
That's right. That's right. So we're one of only 12 states with a sales tax on gasoline. Of course, we have one of the highest sales taxes in the country of 7%. Um, uh, one of only four states that implements their whole uh, sales tax on, on gasoline. So right now, yeah, we're at about 49 cents per gallon. If you implement this, this new law as it's currently written, it would put us uh, fifth highest in the country, right up there with Pennsylvania, uh, Washington, Connecticut, New York, uh, not states you, you necessarily want to be uh, listed with when it comes to tax policy. Yeah, but, but we have the 7% gasoline sales tax, but it's not being, futilized, being utilized fully to pay for the roads. Talk about that. Yeah, I mean, that's one of our main points. You know, uh, legislators are, are saying that as they... Uh, survey their constituents, they are uh, in agreement that, that they should raise the gas taxes to fund our roads. But one thing they fail to mention is that only 15% of our sales tax on gasoline goes to fund roads and infrastructure. So you have a huge uh, portion of that gasoline sales tax equals out to somewhere around $350 million a year that is not going uh, to roads. So our argument is, hey, you know, before you ask people here to pay more, uh, you need to be using the money that you currently uh, collect on taxes on gasoline to fund our roads and infrastructure. You shouldn't be asking for more before you're you're making priorities in the budget. Uh, that's a that's a very simple one, in in my opinion. Do you think Mike Pence would sanction this? Well, I mean, we have a we have a record of him being against it. Actually, they proposed it last year. The Speaker of the House proposed it last year here in Indiana, and and the Governor Pence came out before anyone else and said, uh, I will not support a, a an increase in the gasoline tax. Now, he came up with a with billion dollars through other ways uh, to help uh, offset, you know, what we needed for, for infrastructure improvement needs here in the state. You know, it was a short-term plan, but, but hey, you know, sometimes when, when government tries to plan out things for 10, 20, 30 years down the road, uh, they don't necessarily take, in, uh, take the, the taxpayer uh, in mind when they're doing that. So, so, yeah, I mean, we have a record, and, and I think that was one of our advantages last year. We had a governor who, who came out and said no. Um, this year, you know, with our new governor, he's, he's not really taking a stance on this currently. So it'll be interesting to see uh, kind of where he falls on this as the, as the discussion continues through the, through the end of April. Well, you know, under Governor Pence, Indiana, and continues to be rated like number one in school choice in, in all 50 states. But I don't yeah. think we want to be known as in the top five of the highest gas taxes in America. Uh, yeah. Who, who wants that? Yeah, I mean, we have, to be honest, we have a lot of good things going for us. You know, I, I want to give credit where credit is due. I'm not one of those guys where you make an enemy of me on one issue and I don't give you credit on anything else. It's not the case here. I mean, we're a state who, you know, we, we reduced income taxes. We have one of the lowest income taxes in the in the country, a flat rate across the board. Uh, we... we got rid of the inheritance tax. We reduced corporate taxes significantly. Uh, we got rid of the common construction wage. Uh, we, we are one of the, the leaders when it comes to school choice. So as far as conservative policies, we are on the right path. And that's why, you know, as conservatives, what we argue is, hey, we cut taxes, we broaden the base, we get more people to work, and, and we actually collect more revenue in the long term. But it's because more people are working and because we've, we've created an environment for growth. Well, that's what's happened here. And my fear is that we start backtracking, we start increasing taxes, we limit the growth potential of the state, and we find ourselves in a situation um, unlike what we're currently in, where we're seeing strong growth and and, uh, and strong revenue forecasts. You know, it's kind of like, you know, Governor Pence moved on to vice president. It's like when the cat's away, the mites will play. Uh, yeah. You and I have discussed the fact with Indiana represented in Washington by Vice President Pence. And the number yeah. two man in the U.S. House on Budget Committee, uh, Fourth Congressman Todd Rakita, he's a friend of ours, appeared on the Conservative Commando radio show multiple times. If ever there's been an environment where Hoosiers could receive federal dollars for helping pay for our highways, it's got to be yeah. now. Uh, come yeah, on. you know, and, and when it comes to uh, the discussion about a federal infrastructure package, you know, as, at AFB, we're going to oppose a, a quote-unquote stimulus package, whether it's President Obama or President Trump. But what I think where there's potential for, for improvement is the fact that Indiana is a donor state. Uh, so when we pay 18.4 cents per gallon in, in uh, excise tax, federal excise tax, uh, on our gasoline, we only receive back 91% of that 
uh, from the federal government. So if there were a time, like you said, if there were ever a time to recoup some of that money, which is not insignificant, almost 10% of what we pay in on that federal excise tax, if there were ever a time to, to get Indiana back to uh, somewhat close to not being a donor state any longer, you would think that this is the time to do it, especially with Vice President Pence. So, so you know, there's some hope there, and, and we're hoping that we move in the right direction uh, when it comes to collecting, recouping some of the money that we're sending up to Washington. Justin, the Conservative Commanders Radio Show Studios, we're right here in New Jersey, and they just increased the state gasoline tax. Yeah. Talk about yeah. what other states are seeking to raise their gas taxes right now, and, and how is AFP fighting the good fight against this across the country? Yeah, so, I mean, we've seen it in Michigan. We've seen the, the fight in South Carolina. We, we're currently engaged in a fight in Tennessee as well as here in Indiana. We were engaged, you know, we have a state chapter there in New Jersey. We were engaged uh, in that fight there. Um you know what we're we're mobilizing the grassroots you know just this past weekend we had 150 people show up to our town hall meeting uh we're sending mail we're making phone calls patching people through to their legislators we're educating people essentially and here's my argument i was asked by by the the state's largest newspaper if i required all the legislators that were coming to our town hall meetings to agree with us before we allowed them to come speak i said absolutely not you know, that's not what we do. What we do is we educate people, and they, they feel, if these legislators feel like their argument uh, will win the day, then uh, we're open to that. But we certainly don't think it will. And, and from all the calls that we've made and the doors that we've knocked on and uh, the constituents that we've talked to, uh, we don't think their argument is winning the day. And, and we think that uh, what people want is, is a government that's leaner, a government that's using their money the way that they're supposed to, especially when it comes to these designated funds going to roads. You know, Justin, it's a mathematical fact. When you raise taxes, the general population has less available spending money. Talk that's about right. how this is a regressive tax. It's going to hit low-income and fixed-income citizens the hardest. It is. And, and, you know, here's the thing about government. You know, we're arguing to, to, off, to move over the gasoline sales tax out of the general fund and use that designated designated solely to roads. Well, what the what the uh, politicians will tell me is, well, we can't do that because then we would have to cut somewhere else. Well, it's not it's not it is not only untrue, but you don't have to cut. We'd actually have more because of the projected growth in revenue. So when when politicians say we have to cut, what that actually means most of the time is it means that we can't grow the government at the pace that we want to. Well, here's the thing. Most people out in this country, their revenue, otherwise known as their paychecks, are not growing from year to year uh, at, a, at a significant clip. Uh, we don't get to just automatically grow our paychecks the way the government does, right? So when it comes to someone who, whether they're living on a fixed income or, or, or maybe they, they didn't get a raise this year or things like that, we're taking more of their money. And especially the people that are out there working hard, that are driving back and forth to work maybe 30, 40, 50 miles a day, uh, this is going to have a significant impact on them. It really is. And they're not going to be able to make up for it by just creating money out of thin air or taking it from someone else, which is what the government is essentially doing. So uh, so they're dealing with inf uh, inflationary costs when it comes to uh, food and, and housing and things like that. And now they will also be dealing with a potential gas tax increase. And, and it, will, it will affect um, lower-income people and, and the working class much more than it'll affect uh, uh, people that, that have a lot more disposable income. Justin, we're coming up against a hard commercial break. Can you stay with us for just a couple minutes, and we'll get right sure back thing. into this? Sure thing. This is J.D. Manier and, and your host, Rick Trader, coming to you live from the Concerted Commanders Radio Network Studios, WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia, and around the world on the Internet with the American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio and AM FM 24-7. Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander 
of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. Hi, I'm Kevin Wade. Conservative Commandos is happy to welcome Liberty HealthShare as a sponsor. Liberty HealthShare is a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. Liberty HealthShare exists for everyone who purchases health care for themselves or their family or who wants to control their own health care. I run a small business, and we were caught in the confusion of Washington's ever-changing health insurance requirements. We found a common-sense solution in Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It simply unites like-minded Americans to share medical costs together. Join a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. That's Liberty HealthShare. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty HealthShare today at 855-585-4237. That's 855-585-4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. And this is J.D. Manier and your host, Rick Crater. If you'd like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, please check out our website, ccrsnetwork.com and ccrshow.com or at 8 a.m. log on to leadingedgeradionetwork.com or in the evening 11 p.m. log on to highplainstalkradio.com and you can listen to Concerted Commandos from any phone by calling 832-999-1199. We're talking with Justin Stevens, the Indiana State Director for Americans for Prosperity. Welcome back to the show, Justin. Thanks, J.D. Appreciate it. We're talking about growth here just before we went to the commercial break. Now, President Donald Trump is making policy decisions as we speak to elevate our economic growth rates back up to Reagan-style 4 to 7% annual increases in GDP. Why aren't these tax-and-spend politicians factoring this into their budget-making when they seek to raise the cost of gas at the pump? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think, like I said, I want to give credit where credit is due, and I think there has been a lot of progress here in Indiana, but my question is, why not continue that? So uh, I, I see this as a step in the wrong direction and, and taking more money out of the pockets of everyday Americans, and and it will start to create a problem that did not exist before and, and probably take us backwards. So, yeah, I mean, when you look at we're, we're finally getting, um, we finally have the potential to make some progress on the federal level. And I'll be honest with you, uh, when it comes to Americans for Prosperity, we, we haven't been in, I won't say we haven't been involved, but we haven't seen a lot of opportunities over the last six to eight years to really make progress. Now, we've tried to, to hold the line. Uh, we've tried to just limit the damage. But now there, there's actually room to make progress, and we're excited about that. It's unfortunate that we're, we're going to have to use some of our resources out in the states to fight off tax increases when we could be using them to push real bold policy reform at the federal level. Uh, you know, we, we could miss some potential opportunity when it comes to that. Justin, our host Rick Trader has some comments and questions for you. Here in a conservative commandos radio show, we are speaking with Justin Stevens. He is the Indiana State Director for Americans for Prosperity. Justin, you know, you talk about raising gas prices. My gosh, they did it here in Pennsylvania. They did it here in New Jersey. Pennsylvania 
within the last few years, years got hit with a 28 cent a gallon gas tax increase. New Jersey, 23 cent a gallon tax increase. But what's for, and you're talking about tax increases out in on gasoline out in Indiana. What do all three of these states have in common, Justin? Republican governors. Yeah. Your Republican governors. You know, here in New Jersey, you got Chris Christie, who for two years ran his fat butt around the country talking like a conservative. What does he do? The first thing he gets does when he gets off the campaign trail, he signs a bill approving a 23 cent a gallon gas tax. Tom Corbett in Pennsylvania passed the gas tax. And what that led to, Justin, was the Pennsylvania voters voters kicking his butt to the curb. So who do they got now? Tom Wolf, a really liberal Democrat. I don't know what's going to happen out there in Indiana, but Justin, these Republicans need to start acting like Republicans, not Democrats. Yeah, so I uh, I actually use Pennsylvania as an example <laughs> here in Indiana. Yeah, well, you should, and and you, you know the same thing's going to happen. In, you know, let let me tell you what's going to happen here in New Jersey. New Jersey has a Democrat state legislature with a Republican governor, Christie, who signed this stupid thing. He could have he could have vetoed this and at least put off this tax. Uh, we're going to have a gubernatorial election in November. Okay, who's running for governor? A guy by the name of Winiski who is pushing this thing. People, the voters have got to wake up too, Justin. They got to understand no. that. Hey, you know the one good thing about living in New Jersey was low gas prices. And why? Because we only had a 14 cent a gallon gas tax. Every other tax in New Jersey is through the roof. So what they do, New Jersey went from the 49th lowest state to the seventh highest state when it came to price of gasoline. And you and J.D. were talking about what this does to the economy. Well, any improvement in the economy during the last eight years... That I could, and people want to call it the Obama economy. If it wasn't for gas prices going from four bucks a gallon to two bucks a gallon, there would have been no improvement in the economy. The economic improvement in this country, I believe, was directly related to lower energy prices. And that's what these idiots are killing with these new taxes. And the other thing, Justin, tell me where it's needed. Because you know where a half a billion dollars of this new tax in New Jersey is going? It's going to build a railroad line from Phillipsburg, Easton, or Phillipsburg, New Jersey, into New York. You know how many people are going to use that line a day? 150 people. Oh, my. A half a billion dollars to build a railroad for 150 people to ride a day. You know, wow. Arka Jednak, your counterpart, the Americans for Prosperity State Director in New Jersey, she did a heck of a job in fighting this. Yep. Americans for Prosperity yeah. does a heck of a job fighting idiotic laws like this around the country. So I just wanted to vent a little bit. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and vent. I just yeah. wanted to well, vent hey, look a little bit. look at it this way. At least you don't have to pump your own gas, right? Well, you know what? They, it, the other thing that really drives me crazy about these things, Justin, is there's an interstate highway that runs parallel to the Delaware River in New Jersey. It's called Interstate 295. This road was paved about five years ago, and I, I ride, ride it quite often. And they just repaved it a couple of months ago after this tax went through. It didn't need repaving. There was not a single pothole in it. They talk about how the roads are crumbling, how the bridges are crumbling. I don't see it. You have oh. idiots like the idiots at um, uh, AAA, okay, the Automobile uh, American Automobile Association. They go on and on and on how this money is needed and how people are going to save money because it doesn't. it's going to save wear and tear in the cars. 
You know, Justin, I am older than dirt. I was around when the first rock was split into two. I've been driving for 50 years. I have never, ever, ever had any damage done to the tires, yep. my car, front end suspensions because of bad roads. And yet this is what they use. They use this cry. In my opinion, who pushes this, Justin, is the construction unions. Because yeah. that's where this money is going to go, into well, their pockets. Well, we began to, to, to question the need. So oh. what, are, what are needs versus wants? You know, and, and so... You know, I want a lot of things, too, but if I can't afford yeah. them, I don't get them. <laughs> well, and, and they're throwing around this, we need $1.2 billion per year, more than what we have right now to fund our roads. The other thing is, and people are buying more uh, and more gas than uh, ever... Uh, and where, where is that money gone? Okay, another example. Another example. They have something called the River Link in New Jersey. Again, that parallels the Delaware River from Camden, New Jersey to Trenton. It's a nice train. I've ridden on it. But the fare is like a dollar forty. It should be six bucks, but it's a dollar forty, and it's subsidized by gas taxes. Mm-hmm. Let those people pay their fair share for a change instead of yeah. coming back to the taxpayer all the time. Uh, you know what, Justin? I'm sorry. I've got to apologize to you. We're out of time. <laughs> no problem. I'm, I on. got off here. I'm sorry, J.D. Justin, tell people how they can follow Americans for Prosperity. Yeah, go to AFPIndiana.org. And also we have uh, we're, we're on Twitter. Uh, AFP Indiana, and then also on Facebook to keep up uh, daily. Are you going to CPAC? I am not. Oh, uh, okay. I was going to but say, like, come see us. I, I, I got to stop having kids, man. I got <laughs> I got to kind of pick and choose, you know, how, how many people come away. So. <laughs> well, you guys at Americans for Prosperity do a great job. In fact, this radio show is a, is as a result of an Americans for Prosperity program called the Right Online Conference. Yeah. That's how we got our start. Very it's long. It's a little bit of a story, but we got it run. Justin Stevens, Americans for Prosperity, Indiana Thanks. State Director, thank you so much for joining us. Have a good one. Take care. God bless. And you are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with J.D. Muneer and Rick Trader coming to you live from the studios of the Amer- <laughs> Studios of WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia and around the world on the Internet. With American Patriots Broadcasting, TalkStream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM 24-7. Don't go away. On the other side, we'll be speaking with John Malcolm from the Heritage Foundation. We're going to be talking about Trump's Supreme Court nomination. Be right back. This is Rick Trader, host of the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And I'm John Forsyth, owner of WNJC Radio. Fellow patriots, the Conservative Commandos Radio Show is for conservatives, about conservatives, and by conservatives. We are patriots who want to take our country back from the likes of Barack Obama, Harry Reid, George Soros, and Nancy Pelosi. But we can't keep up this fight without your critical support today. Can you help? Please go to www.helpccrs.com right now and make a donation by credit card or PayPal. That's www.helpccrs.com. Our goal is to expose the liberal agenda and distortions. We are fighting to spread the truth about political issues, political leaders, and conservative issues and values. Our hosts are not paid. In fact, we buy our own airtime studio time and pay our own expenses we created the show because we are trying to make a difference so can you help the ccrs expose the truth in 2014 and beyond go to www.helpccrs.com help keep the conservative commandos radio show on the air by going to www.helpccrs.com and make a donation today to return our country to the conservative roots created by our founding fathers. 
If your health care has become a burden and you're worried about being stuck for another year, you have options. Liberty Health Share could be the solution to your problem. Open enrollment is here and could be your chance to free yourself from insurance. Take this opportunity and join Liberty Health Share. You can finally be in control and have freedom when it comes to your health care. Liberty Health Share offers an entirely open network, which means you choose your doctors and you choose your hospitals. Liberty Health Share offers freedom from insurance, meaning no tax related penalties. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty Health Share today at 855 585 4237. That's 855 585 4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCSforAutomation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. At 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. If you'd like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, please check out our website, ccrsnetwork.com and ccrshow.com. Or at 8 a.m., log on to Leading Edge Radio Network.com. Or in the evening, 11 p.m., log on to High Plains Talk Radio.com. And you can listen to the Concerted Commandos from any phone by calling 832 999 1199. John G. Malcolm oversees the Heritage Foundation's work to increase understanding of the Constitution and the rule of law as director of the think tanks, Edwin Meese III, Center for Legal and Judicial Studies. And he is the man responsible for creating Donald Trump's Supreme Court list. In addition to his 
duties at Heritage, Malcolm is a chairman of the Criminal Law Practice Group of the Federalist Society and chairman-elect of the Board of Directors for Boys Town, Washington, D.C., which provides homes and services to troubled children and families who are edging towards crisis. Welcome to the Concerted Commanders Radio Show, John. Good plug for Boys Town. I appreciate that. Thank you. It sure was a big moment in our nation's history last night as President Trump announced his Supreme Court pick. Please give our listeners your thoughts on Neil Gorsuch. Sure. Neil Gorsuch is a superb judge and will be fantastic Supreme Court justice. So a little bit about him. He is, he is 49 years old. He is very familiar with the ways of Washington. His mother, Ann uh, Gorsuch Burford, was the EPA administrator, you know, head of the Environmental Protection Agency under Ronald Reagan. Uh, he has a superb academic background. He went to Columbia College. Then he got a doctorate from Oxford University. He went on to Harvard Law School. After that, he clerked for David Sentel of the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, a very well-known and highly regarded conservative judge. He then clerked for two Supreme Court justices, uh, Byron White and then Anthony Kennedy. He then practiced law in Washington, became a partner at a prestigious law firm. He then served in a high-level position in the Associate Attorney General's office during the Bush administration. And for the last 10 years, uh, he has been a judge on, on the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals sitting in Colorado, where he has truly distinguished himself as an outstanding writer, and more importantly than being an outstanding writer, a very deep thinker uh, on both constitutional and statutory cases. You know, you personally were the one who crafted Donald Trump's Supreme Court candidate list. Can you tell our audience how you went about that process? Well, (laughs) there were many cooks in that kitchen, and I was very, very happy to have uh, at least a peripheral role. And President Trump was certainly very kind to thank the Heritage Foundation and indirectly me for our contributions. So the way that all came about is that shortly after Antonin Scalia died, then-candidate Trump was at a meeting in Washington, D.C., where my boss, Jim DeMint, the former senator from South Carolina, was in attendance. And at that meeting, Donald Trump turned to Jim DeMint and said, Will the Heritage Foundation help me compile a list of Supreme Court justices, to which Senator DeMint said yes. He then came back here to Heritage, and actually we made the decision. I was one task with putting that list together. And two, the decision was made that rather than give it just to Donald Trump, we would publish it and make it available to all the candidates. So actually my list was as available to Bernie Sanders as it was uh, to Donald Trump. I had a very, very short list. I had, had eight names on that list six of which uh, ended up making it onto uh, Donald Trump's list, and he certainly credited it with helping to shape his thinking uh, for the, you know, all of the people that ended up on the Trump list. Well, and it affected many, many voters. I mean, it was a, a point of genius to early on point out that this was a big issue. Oh, yes, absolutely. So, look, there were a lot of conservatives, you know, obviously people around the country, but certainly conservatives that were very skeptical about Donald Trump. But they knew one thing, which is they cared an awful lot about the courts, and they cared an awful lot about filling the Scalia vacancy and filling the lower courts. And I think it was a brilliant move on Donald Trump's part to to put uh, together that list. It was a sober, well-thought-through list. All of the names, the men and women on that list, outstanding uh, credentials. And so a whole lot of people in the conservative community and across the country breathed a sigh of relief and said, all right, on this issue that we care passionately about, the court is in good hands. And actually, over 70 percent of the people who voted for Donald Trump said in, in exit polls that the future direction of the Supreme Court was an important or the most important factor uh, facing them when they went and pulled that, uh, you know, push the lever for Donald Trump. Can you get your crystal ball out and give us a preview of coming attractions concerning the U.S. Senate confirmation battle for for Neil Gorsuch? Sure. I I really do think that at the end of the day he is going to be confirmed. And I expect what's going to happen is that there's going to be an awful lot of discussion during the confirmation process about Merrick Garland and the fact that they felt that he was not treated fairly. And there'll be a lot of discussion about Donald Trump. But I do not think 
that the Democrats are going to be able to find much to hang their hat on in terms of criticizing uh, Judge Gorsuch. The Democrats are incredibly angry. They lost an election that they thought uh, they were going to win. They're very, very angry about Merrick Garland. They felt that he was ill-treated by not uh, getting a vote. And the, the base of the Democratic par- Party are, are mad as hornets. So I expect that they will attempt to mount a filibuster uh, against Merrick Garland. Uh, not Merrick Garland, sorry, Neil Gorsuch. My prediction is that will fail, that they will not be able to sustain a filibuster. And, and if they are, we'll see what the Republicans do, whether or not they extend the nuclear option uh, to cover Supreme Court justices, but I don't think that'll be necessary. Yeah, but, you know, their argument, isn't it true that for the last 70 years, no lame duck president of the United States has, has seated a Supreme Court justice in his last year in office? Is that true? Yeah, I believe that is. Uh, well, let me think about that. So... Anthony Kennedy was confirmed in an election year, but that was a seat that had been vacant for well over a year, and it was vacant because the Democrats demagogued and ultimately defeated Robert Bork. Uh, The last time you had a vacancy come open in an election year in which you had a nominee from one president where the Senate was controlled by the other party was in 1888. And I would point out that when George Herbert Walker Bush was president, with a year to go, uh, still in his presidency, Senator then Senator Joe Biden went to the well of the Senate and said, you know, if another vacancy occurs, I'm telling you now, we will not confirm a Supreme Court justice. And with a year and a half to go in the presidency of George W. Bush, Chuck Schumer took to the well of the Senate and said, if another vacancy occurs, the Senate will not confirm uh, a justice. Uh, so, you know, the confirmation process has been politicized. It is not pretty, but to some degree, sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. And I'll go further than that. Two weeks before this election, when the Democrats thought we were going to have President Hillary Clinton and that they had a decent chance of retaking the majority in the Senate, Harry Reid and Vice presidential nominee Tim Kaine said, if we have President Clinton and she nominates a Supreme Court justice and the, and the Republicans filibuster that nominee, we will extend the nuclear option to cover Supreme Court justices. <laughs> We're coming up against a hard break. Can you just hold with us a couple minutes, John, and sure. we'll be right back into this discussion. Absolutely. This is J.D. Manier and your host, Rick Trader, coming to you live from Concerted Commandos Radio Network Studios, WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia, and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeart Radio, and AM FM 24-7. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network Monday through Saturday from 12 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. Hi, I'm Kevin Wade. Conservative Commandos is happy to welcome Liberty HealthShare as a sponsor. Liberty HealthShare is a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. Liberty HealthShare exists for everyone who purchases health care for themselves or their family or who wants to control their own health care. 
I run a small business, and we were caught in the confusion of Washington's ever-changing health insurance requirements. We found a common-sense solution in Liberty HealthShare. Liberty HealthShare is not insurance. It simply unites like-minded Americans to share medical costs together. Join a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. That's Liberty HealthShare. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty HealthShare today at 855-585-4237. That's 855-585-4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. If you'd like to hear rebroadcast of today's show, check out our website, tcrsnetwork.com and tcrshow.com. At 8 a.m., you can log on to Leading Edge Radio Network.com. In the evening, 11 p.m., log on to High Plains Talk Radio.com. And you can listen to Concerted Commandos from any phone by calling 832 999 1199. We're talking with John G. Malcolm, who heads up the Edwin Mesa III Center for Legal and Judicial Studies. Welcome back to Concerted Commandos Radio Show, John. Good to be with you. Continuing on this subject of confirmation process, you know, here in my own home state of Indiana, uh, for a number of sessions, the Democrats who were in the minority, they, they just left and drove to Illinois and, and camped out saying, well, you guys can't ha 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 have a quorum, so you can't get anything done. And eventually they, they had to do punitive daily fines and on these uh, House members from the Democrat Party and things got working again. Talk a little bit about these delay tactics on Trump's nominations and, and how – how, what kind of options does the Senate have now to get Gorsuch through on an up-and-down vote? Well, uh, of course, we've seen a lot in the last couple of days, things like the Democrats not showing up for committee hearings for people like Tom Price for HHS secretary or Steve Mnuchin to be Treasury secretary. Uh, in both instances, the Republicans ended up voting to suspend the rules, and so they voted these nominees out of committee and onto the floor of the Senate. Uh, and I thought it was, frankly, somewhat childish on behalf of the uh, of the Democrats. And, and look, I have no doubt that uh, the Democrats will try whatever delaying maneuvers they can in terms of Judge Gorsuch, if for no other reason, because I think they believe that their core Democratic base is demanding that they that they do it. They will only be able to take it so far. So Charles Grassley, who's the head of the Senate Judiciary Committee, said today there will be a confirmation hearing in six weeks. That starts a process. Uh, and, you know, once that happens, there will be four votes. The Democrats can choose to carry that out as long as they want. They can file motions to try to filibuster that the Republicans will have to vote down, and then they will have to see if they can mount a filibuster. Uh, but, you know, look, they will, they will drag this out, but I am quite confident that at the end of the day, uh, you know, Neil Gorsuch is going to be confirmed. In addition to the fact that he is a superb judge, you have 10 uh, Democratic senators who are up for re-election in two years in states that Donald Trump won, including one in Indiana, uh, as I'm sure I don't need to tell you. Five of them are in states that Donald Trump won by double digits. Uh, and, you know, I just don't – you already have a number of Democratic senators – started to hint that they are at the very least currently disinclined to join a filibuster, and I, I just don't think they'll be able to do it. Our host, Rick Trader, has a question or two for you. Here on Conservative Commandos Radio Show, we are speaking with John Malcolm from the Heritage Foundation. We're discussing uh, Trump's Supreme Court pick. Uh, John, on the, on the topic of confirmations, you know, you talk about the Democrats not showing up. You talk about draining the swamp. Follows the news that Republican senators Susan Collins and Lisa Markowski have announced their opposition opposition to Betsy DeVoe for education secretary. Makes me want to vomit, John. <laughs> well, look, I, <sighs> I'm a big fan of I've never met Betsy DeVos before. Uh, but, you know, Betsy DeVos has been a 
can't she, she's obviously comes from a wealthy family and she doesn't need to spend her time on any public issue and she has devoted her time her money and her resources and her passion to school choice and charter school issues and homeschooling issues to in, to increase competition and bring educational diversity to the people who need it most and that is in communities of color where they are ill served by our educational system and there is no question that uh, you know the teachers unions are hopping mad about this there have been some criticisms on the right that they don't think that she's you know, come out enough against Common Core and that sort of thing. But I, I think the Department of Education has, needs to be shaken up in this sort of way. And you know, I'm disappointed that Senators Collins and Murkowski uh, have defected, if you will, with respect to confirming Betsy DeVos. I just hope that there isn't another Republican who crosses over, too, because if just two of them, then she will get confirmed. It'll be a 50-50 tie, and, and, and Mike Pence, the vice president, will break that tie. But, of course, if a third Republican... Uh, crosses over them, the DeVos nomination is in jeopardy. Another point I heard this morning, okay, uh, that Donald Trump might have an opportunity to name another justice in about three months. There's speculation that there may be a retirement there. Have you heard anything about this? And and if this is true, uh, who would you think that Donald Trump might nominate? Well, I look, as I said, I think the odds are very high that over the next four years and certainly over the next eight years, Donald Trump will have other opportunities to name justices to the Supreme Court. So Ruth Bader Ginsburg is 83 years old. Anthony Kennedy is 80 years old. Stephen Breyer is 78 years old. I don't wish any of them ill health, but they have already each outlived the average lifespan of men and women in this country. So over an eight-year period of time, probably even over a four-year period of time, the odds are high that one or more of them will retire or pass on. It has been rumored that uh, Justice Kennedy is thinking about retiring, uh, and I have heard some rumors. You hear these rumors at the end of a Supreme Court term every year that there may be a justice prepared to retire. If there were going to be a justice prepared to retire, it would no doubt be Anthony Kennedy. But whether Anthony Kennedy is choosing now to retire or to hold on for another year or two, I, you know, I just don't know. And in terms of who would replace him, look – Donald Trump came up with an outstanding list of 21 names. He's now plucked one name from off that list. He has uh, a number of other outstanding uh, people to choose from. It was really an embarrassment of riches. And frankly, after this first pick, if he wanted to go off the list, he probably could. And there are other outstanding people whom he could name to the court. Justin J.D. again. I'm just trying to think of, you know, what can the Democrats say against uh, Neil Gorsuch. Are they going to resort to personal and salacious attacks like they did to Bork and Clarence Thomas? What, what, what's going to be their strategy, you think? Well, boy, unless there's some skeleton in the closet that I'm unaware of, it certainly seems that, that Neil Gorsuch, in terms of his personal uh, you know, um, personal behavior, appears to be beyond reproach, although everybody's got some skeletons in their closet, I suppose, and there's no question that the Democrats will be digging, uh, digging for it. I, I don't know exactly what they're going to use to attack him, which is why I think you're going to hear a lot about Donald Trump and a lot about Merrick Garland. I mean, I suppose uh, people may point to the fact that he joined the Hobby Lobby decision and made it clear that he also would have ruled in favor of the Little Sisters of the Poor. Uh, so they may be you know, saying that he's too much in favor of religious adherence and he's opposed to abortion. And, you know, they'll, they'll try to make some noise about that. He, he's certainly written some provocative opinions in terms of not anything that one could really criticize, but in terms of being raising interesting points. He's urged the Supreme Court to overturn its seminal opinion on an, on an area of administrative law, which may not seem like much, but it's actually very important because it covers the amount of deference that judges need to show to agencies when they sort of change their interpretations of existing laws. That was a bold decision. I don't know whether the Democrats are going to be able to make much hay with that or not. It's hard to see really how they'll be able to, on the merits, mount any kind of a successful attack against Neil Gorsuch. Well, it's so funny, uh, the shoe's on the other foot, but wasn't last summer, weren't the Democrats screaming, up or down vote, up or down vote for Merrick Garland? Yeah, they, they, they sure will, and uh, the Republicans held firm by invoking what they called the Biden rule, saying this was an election year, and, you know, the justices served for years and usually decades after the president who appointed them, and that the 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 people should have some kind of a say as to what kind of president and what kind of justice they want on the court. And actually, by putting out that list, uh, I, the courts were very much on 
on the ballot. So people really had a chance to choose, and they, they decided that they wanted Donald Trump making that nomination, not Hillary Clinton. It was, in fact, quite a gamble. If Hillary Clinton had won, the odds were actually pretty good that she was going to name a younger and more ideologically inclined uh, person to sit on the Supreme Court. Uh, but in this case, it's, it was a, a principled gamble to take, and it was a gamble that paid off. We're, we're coming up against the, the end of the show, but we, we want our listeners to know how they can read your writing and, and, your, and support also the Heritage Foundation. Can you leave a blog and, and some information? website? Sure. Well, they, anybody can go to heritage.org and read my writings or the writings of my colleagues. They can just go to the search bar and type in John Malcolm. Uh, you know, anybody, they can, if people are, are incensed or pleased and want to send me an email, they can send an email to the Heritage Foundation. It usually finds a way to reach me. Uh, and, you know, my time permitting, I actually love engaging in that sort of dialogue with interested listeners. Well, God bless you. And so much a privilege to you have you come on our show right after Donald Trump named Neil Gorsuch as his Supreme Court pick. And we know you were you were a principal person involved in creating that list of Supreme Court candidates. So thank you again. We look forward to having you back on our show. Well, that's very kind of you, and I look forward to it. And, uh, J.D., we're going to wrap things up in a minute. I want to make an, an announcement that tomorrow Congressman Jody Heiss will be joining us to talk about the, the near, Neil Gorsuch nomination by Donald Trump and also the other Donald Trump picks to serve on his cabinet. So be sure to tune in to Conservative Commandos tomorrow. also want to remind our listeners out there to please follow us on Twitter. It's easy to do. Uh, Conservative Commando or CCR Show on Twitter. Please follow us there. Also, please join our uh, Facebook group, Conservative Commandos Radio Show group. We post things on there about the show or guests, other shows. We don't put a lot of garbage or trash on there. It's strictly about show announcements. So please join that to keep track of um, what we're doing here on Conservative Commandos. I want to thank our guests today for sitting in. I want to thank Mr. John Forsyth Jr. for working the boards. And J.D., I want to thank you for sitting in today as my co-host. It's been fun. J.D., you got 30 seconds. Well, Bob Drigo Jones, we want to thank at 335. That was so much fun. Always great having him on the show. Justin Stevens, Indiana State Director of America for Prosperity. And let's dump that that gasoline in, into the harbor, so to speak. And, oh, and John dump Malcolm. the tax in the harbor. Great. Save the gas. Dump the tax. And any politician who wants to approve it, dump them too. Amen. Amen. With that, J.D., we're out of time. we got to run. we got to go. Take care. God bless. And we'll see you tomorrow on the radio. 1360 AM. WNJC. Washington Township. Philadelphia. Hi, I'm Kevin Wade. Conservative Commandos is happy to welcome Liberty HealthShare as a sponsor. Liberty HealthShare is a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. Liberty HealthShare exists for everyone who purchases health care for themselves or their family or who wants to control their own health care. I run a small business, and we were caught in the confusion of Washington's ever-changing health insurance requirements. We found a common-sense solution in Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is not insurance. It simply unites like-minded Americans to share medical costs together. Join a community of health-conscious Americans who practice long-standing Christian principles in sharing health care costs. That's Liberty Health Share. To find out how you can easily make the change, call Liberty Health Share today at 855-585-4237. That's 855-585-4237. Or visit their website at libertyhealthshare.org.